be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. It's good to see Cardinals here, Brother Cardinals. Thank you, Lord. We don't know what today is, right? Ash Wednesday. Yesterday was what? Tuesday. Tuesday? Fat Tuesday. <laughs> it's Fat Tuesday. Amen. <clears throat> so with the help of the Lord, I'm going to teach and preach on, say a few words on Fat Tuesday and the fasting. It's really the fasting 40 days for Tammuz. Voy a hacer, decir unas cuantas palabras según este el día de, de ayer y, y el día de hoy y lo, de los 40 días de desayuno que viene siendo um, que están ayunando esos 40 días son um, tan ayuna, eh, viene de, de dónde viene eso es ayuno de los 40 días um, and I did say uh, where that fasting came from those 40 days well <coughs> don't get me wrong uh, the Lord did fast right the Lord fasted 40 days <clears throat> and uh, he fasted 40 days and so we'll, we'll see what the word of God says amen so I'm going to read Matthew chapter 6 I led San Mateo capítulo 6 Voy a leer versículos 1 al 4. So I'll read verses 1 through 4. And it reads as follows. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Let us pray. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that I have to stand before your people and to teach and to preach what you put in my heart. In the name of Jesus, let these words not return back empty, Lord. Let them go and do what they're supposed to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. So I'll read those <laughs> scriptures in Spanish. En español nos dice la palabra, Guardaos de hacer vuestra justicia delante de los hombres para ser vistos de ellos. De otra manera, no tendráis recompensa de vuestro Padre que está en los cielos. Cuando pues des limosna, 
no hagas tocar trompeta delante de ti, como hacen los hipócritas en las sinagogas y en las calles para ser alabados por los hombres. De cierto os digo que ya tienen su recompensa, mas cuando tú des limosna, no sepa tu izquierda lo que hace tu derecha para que sea tu limosna en secreto y tu padre que ven en lo secreto él recompensará en público so we're, we're, we're supposed to do this in, in secret we do our alms in secret nuestra nuestra justicia dice que tiene que ser en secreto. Más bien dice, para que sea tu limosna en secreto. Tenemos que quedar en secreto nuestras almas. En inglés es alms. En español dice, guardaos de hacer vuestra justicia delante de los hombres. So, our righteousness can't be before everyone. <coughs> and I was going to read um, 16 through 18. Well, y también voy a leer los versículos 17, 16 a 18, dice en inglés. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. See, it needs to be in secret. Voy a leerlo en español. Cuando ayunes, no seas austeros como los hipócritas, porque ellos demudan sus rostros para mostrar a los hombres que ayunan. De cierto os digo que ya tienen su recompensa. Pero tú cuando ayunes, unge tu cabeza y lava tu rostro. Para no mostrar a los hombres que ayunas, sino a tu Padre que está en secreto. Y tu Padre que ve en lo secreto te recompensará en público. <coughs> See, what we do in secret, the Lord will reward thee in public. Openly, it says in English. In Spanish, he'll reward thee in public. Amen. Sí. And uh, so, like I said, today is Ash Wednesday. And a lot of people, that's what they did, right? A lot of people, they, uh, they went and they put their ash or had the priest anoint them with a little cross ash on their forehead. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> the Bible said, we just read that, to do it in secret. Why do they put the ash on their forehead? Anybody? <clears throat> well, if it's, if it's anything according to the Word of God, um, it's probably for <clears throat> some type of repentance, some type of for repentance maybe but nevertheless they do it openly they do it in public what what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do it in secret mm -hmm. the bible says to wash your face mm -hmm. wash your face don't disfigure your face mm -hmm. don't appear unto men to fast um, <clears throat> don't appear unto men fast. Oh, poor thing, look at him. Better buy him a meal. 
Had to buy him a meal. Look at him, poor thing. Mm -hmm. He's all disfigured. Mm -hmm. Looks like he just got out of bed. <laughs> Looks like he just got out of bed, right? Mm -hmm. No, you wash yourself. Don't appear unto men like you're fasting. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, <clears throat> I've heard people say that. <clears throat> verse seventeen says, "But thou." When thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. See, they, they think it means to, to get the old oil and it's time to put the oil on and put the oil on and wash your face and no, that's not what it means. Un head tu cabeza. You you wash yourself. You wash your face, your head. Um, you don't anoint your head with oil. <clears throat> no, you're supposed to wash yourself. You know, but some people, that's what they do. They, they anoint themselves with oil and, and they fast. <clears throat> but <clears throat> it's not the case. You appear unto men or unto God like you're fasting, not unto men. You know, we are supposed to fast. Yes. We are supposed to fast. That we are supposed to do. You know, the, um, <clears throat> they, when the Lord was here on earth, his disciples didn't fast. But there was a time when they were going to have to fast. There was a time when they were going to fast. Yes. So los discípulos, <coughs> ellos no ayunaban. <coughs> no ayunaron cuando Jesús estaba aquí con ellos. No tenían que. Pero cuando Dios se resucitó, entonces ellos sí se tenían que, tenían que ayunar. Tenían que ayunar y, y como dice aquí en... <coughs> En versículos 17, que se unge su cabeza y, y lava tu rostro. So, we wash our head and, oh, and our face. Mm -hmm. So, nos lavamos nuestra cabeza y nuestra cara y <coughs> para no aparecer a la gente que estamos ayunando. Porque después, si sí, pueda que los... Trabajadores nos digan, no, pobrecito, deja ir y comprarle algo para comer. No, tenemos que <coughs> aparecer a Dios que estamos ayunando, no a los hombres. Los hombres no tienen que saber que estamos ayunando, porque es en secreto. It's in secret. <coughs> um, de eso de la gente que se puso hoy, se ungieron, o más, más bien el Padre los ungió con, con ceniza, en, pusieron una cruz en su, en su frente. ¿Eso era en secreto? ¿No era en secreto? Todos, todos que vieron eso, o si vieron a alguien ¿no? en el trabajo, si vieron a alguien con una cruz en su cabeza, ya saben por qué, ¿verdad? Ya saben por qué. So, no, eso no era en secreto. So, if you saw someone today and with ash on their head, sign of a cross, that wasn't in secret, was it? You knew what the meaning behind it was. You knew, you knew pretty much their background. You knew what their belief was. <coughs> Ustedes cuando vieron a alguien nací, supieron el tipo de religión que eran ellos, que eran sus creencias, creencias. So we knew that that was no secret. That was no secret. <coughs> But <coughs> You know, we're, we're supposed to do things in secret. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to do things as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
not unto men. We don't stand in the corner and pray. We don't stand in the corner to pray to be seen of men, to see how holy you are. No, we don't need to do that. The Lord needs to know. He says to enter into, into your closet. Enter into your closet, shut the door in, and then get a hold of God. You enter into your secret place, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, whether it's your room or or a closet, whatever, you know, you just go in there and take care of the Lord's business. It's between you and God, not between you and, and everyone else. Just like we don't advertise that we're Christians by by the shirt you wear that says maybe Acts two thirty eight or whatever, born again in the back, huh? I used to my my cousin would wear a shirt three quarter sleeves and in the back, born again. Uh, you don't know that they're Christians unless they, unless that, they got that signage on their shirt. It says, born again. Um, other than that, they, they live like the devil and whatever, right? They live like the devil. You don't know that they're Christians, except for the advertising that they have on their shirt. Tienen sus camisas, camisetas, que son cristianos que son nacidos de nuevo, que son bautizados en el nombre de Jesús porque dice su camisa. Pero además de eso, no, no saben que, que son cristianos porque viven como el demonio, viven como el diablo el resto de los días, nomás los domingos no. So they live like the devil every day of the week except on Sundays. On Sundays, they're Christians. No, <clears throat> we, we, need <clears throat> we need to live for the Lord every day. That's right, amen. Every day. Our testimony needs to show it. Yes. Our testimony, just like the apostles said, you're a, you're a living testimony. That's right, amen. We don't need a letter. Right. You are an open letter. Yes. You come from another place to visit. You come from another church. You don't need to bring a letter to us telling us how faithful you are. No, you're an open letter. You're an open letter. All the scripture that's in the Word of God, I see it. I see it on you. See, we're, because that's who we are. We're, we're an open book. We're an open letter. Dice la Biblia que, que son un, ustedes son una letra de la Biblia. Son, hay gente que va de una iglesia a otra y van con su, con su letra. Van con su letra, más bien. More likely it's like this. Traen, traen un envelope. Uh, you come to church from somewhere else and, and more or less it's like this it's in an envelope it's in an envelope and it's sealed uh, it's sealed you can't forge it you can't say oh I was a good boy over here no it's sealed and you're, you're to give it to your pastor <laughs> and he's supposed to know what kind of person you are no you're an open book Uh, so no es así, dice la Biblia. No tienen que traer una, una letra para decirme qué que es su testimonio. Cómo viven a, con Dios, cómo sirven a Dios, si están fieles o no. Dice la Biblia, el apóstol Pablo. Usted, yo sé la Biblia y... No dice así, pero... Dice el apóstol Pablo, ustedes son... Una carta abierta. So, ustedes son una carta abierta. Según la Biblia, ustedes son 
una carta abierta, abierta. Yo, yo puedo ver la escritura y saber que ustedes están obedeciendo la palabra de Dios porque aquí está escrito y ahí está el ejemplo you're an example like I was saying I can read the word of God and I see it in you you're an open book and uh, so no you don't you don't have to disfigure your faces you don't have to put sackcloth you don't have to you just repent unto the Lord you just repent unto the Lord it's between you and God mm -hmm. you don't need to put sackcloth and ashes uh, that was done away with mm -hmm. that was done away with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't need to repent in sackcloth and ashes uh, that's where I'm thinking that comes from the ashes El, la ceniza dice la Biblia ¿Ah? ¿qué significa? Sí, di, significa la, la, los ashes es, dice la Biblia que, que se arrepienten con sackcloth con un tipo de vestido de vestidura y ceniza repent with sackcloth and ashes dice la Biblia pero eso era antes eso era antes, ahora ya no, ya no se tienen que ungir con aceite o con ceniza. Ya no, ya no es así. Remember, those sacrifices were done away with. Mm -hmm. Esos sacrificios se acabaron, ya no, ya no tienen que traer sus, sus animales y, y, y matarlos y derramar la sangre y todo eso. Es mucho borlote. Ahora su sacrificio es. Now our sacrifice is a sacrifice of praise. Right. Un sacrificio de alabanza. Yes. Eso es nuestro sacrificio. A sacrifice of praise yes. and worship to our God. Eso es nuestro sacrificio de pura alabanza. Ya no tenemos que. Todos esos animales ya. Ya se acabaron. We don't have to do that anymore. Amen. So, I was going to read, voy a leer Ezequiel capítulo 8. I'm going to read Ezekiel <coughs> chapter 8. <coughs> It's not going to say that they were fasting the 40 days. Okay? But let's see what Ezekiel says. No va a decir que, que, que estaban ayunando los 40 días. Pero vamos a saber que la gente estaba llorando. Sí, sí, Ezekiel 14, Ezekiel 8. <coughs> Eight and nine, maybe? Or no. I said 13, 14. Ezequiel 13 y 14. Ezequiel 8, 13 y 14. I'm going to get my bilingual. Mm -hmm. Get that up to. And Ezekiel. Thirteen or fourteen, it says, verse thirteen it says, He said also unto me, Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Okay. So, you know that Tammuz existed, okay? You know that Tammuz existed and that women were weeping for him. Weeping were, women were weeping for Tammuz. 
See, and that was an abomination unto the Lord. Matter of fact, we can read <clears throat> before that. Let's see. Verse 8. Start with verse 8. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping thing and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel pro portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before me seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth, seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. <clears throat> he said also unto me, Turn ye that, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. <clears throat> then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. See? Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. See? Mm -hmm. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch, and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. See that? That's what the people were doing. And the Lord was showing Ezekiel what they were doing. Here they had their back against God. They had their back against God and they were worshiping the sun. That's what they do on the sunrise service. That's what they'll be doing on Easter Sunday. They're going to have their back against God and worshiping the sun as it rises. So voy a leerlo en español. Y me dijo, hijo de hombre, versículos 8. So, es Isiquiel 8, 8. Y me dijo, hijo de hombre, cava ahora en la pared. Y cabe un, cabe en la pared y he aquí una puerta. Me dijo, luego entra y ve las malvades abominaciones que estos hacen allí. Entre pues y miren. E, y he aquí toda forma de reptiles y bestias abominables y todos los ídolos de la casa de Israel que estaban pintados en la pared por todo alrededor. See, they were painted. They were painted on the wall. I was just thinking of a dream that I had a long time ago. And I'll just tell you the, uh, I was dreaming that, uh, <clears throat> I had a dream that I was walking down the hall and the walls were, the, I guess they were painted on, but they were, I don't know, it was just dark. It was dark, but I was walking down this hall and, and this was the place on Logan. 400 South Logan, remember the church on Logan? And there was stuff on the walls, creepy things on the wall, and and I was just walking straight. I was going towards the kitchen where a new panel was, new, a new electrical panel, and, 
And sure enough, after that, and we heard that Logan was was now what a marijuana joint, a marijuana place, and they had repainted the walls. They had repainted the walls, and who knows what kind of what stuff they had put on the walls and ceiling and whatever. But yeah, this is what they had. They had all these reptiles, these beasts, their idols painted on the walls. Eso es lo que tenían en las paredes, pintadas todos los reptili, reptiles lo, y bestias, todo abominables, pintados en la pared, todo alrededor. Y delante de ellos estaban 70 varones de los ancianos de la casa de Israel y Hazanáis, Hazanías, hijo de Safán, en medio de ellos, cada uno con su in incensario en su mano y subía una nube espesa de incienso, incienso. Y me dijo, hijo de hombre, ¿has visto las cosas que los ancianos de la casa de Israel hacen? En tinieblas cada uno en sus cámaras pintadas de imágenes. Porque dicen ellos, no nos ve Jehová. Jehová ha abandonado la tierra. Me dijo después, vuélvete aún, verás opinar abominaciones mayores que hacen estos y me llevó a la entrada de la puerta de la casa de Jehová que está al norte y he aquí mujeres que estaban allí sentadas en dejando a Tamuz en dejando a Tamuz so, leí eso para que sabían que este Tamuz se encuentra en la Biblia. So this Tammuz, you know that he's there. He's there, he's in the word of God. So esa, eso era abominable a, a Dios. Que las mujeres que estaban allí sentadas endechando a Tammuz. Estaban llorando a Tammuz. ¿Y quién es ese Tamuz? Who is that Tamuz? Huh? Who is that Tamuz guy, that character? We hear so much about him. <coughs> well, that Tamuz, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit. It's, um, I'll start, I'll just read the last of it. It says, now let's, <clears throat> now let's look, this I got from the internet, okay? You could get it from there too. It's for you too. The internet's for everybody. It says, now let's look at this individual of deity or deity if you prefer, of Ezekiel 8, 14, Tammuz was worshipped as a pagan deity by a festival that was celebrated with weeping and fasting for 40 days. Mm -hmm. So they, um, esta era una fiesta que celebraban por 40 días de ayuno a este Tammuz. That is where the Catholic tradition of Lent really came from. So las, los católicos, es de donde viene esto, de, de, de esa fiesta de los 40 días de ayuno para Tammuz. Dice, Tammuz was the son of Nimrod and Semiramis. Tammuz was worshipped as the reincarnation of his father, especially since Shem came and killed 
Nimrod. Shem then proceeded to hack Nimrod into pieces, which he then scattered. So Tammuz era el hijo de Nimrod, de Nimrod y Semiramis. Y Tammuz era alabado porque según él era la reencarnación, um, reincarnation, reencarnación de su padre. Especialmente que Shem, su, eh, él vino y mató a Nimrod y despadeció al, al sí, des, Shem despadeció al, al, al Nimrod y tiró todas las partes. This is probably the origin of the story in, in Egyptian mythology of Isis gathering the pieces of her dead husband Osiris after Seth Shem hacked him into pieces. This allowed Isis to resurrect her husband long enough to conceive the son Horus. Thus, you can say that Horus is another version of Tammuz. Tammuz was probably, probably coerced into marrying his mother in order to keep up the charade of him being the reincarnation of his father Nimrod, who miraculously became the son and impregnated his wife. This time as Tammuz. See, it's all mythology, right? Eventually, Semiramis had her son turned husband, killed in a boar hunt. So, este hijo que era reencarnizado de Nimrod, según ellos, el esposo de Semiramis, y um, este hijo casó a su madre, casó, se casó con su madre porque para pa esa creencia que, que era Nimrod, era el padre reencar, reencarnizado en hijo. Y este, este hombre, Tamuz, fue matado por, por un boar. Viene siendo un marrano, ¿qué no? Un boar. It's a pig, right? So, lo mataron estos animales, este animal. When news of Tammuz's accidental death had reached everyone in Babylon, she ordered 40 days of fasting and weeping. In fact, this is the beginning of all pagan mythology involving the mother and child, the mother and child motif that has continued to replicate itself throughout every pagan religion throughout history, culminating with the Queen of Heaven. See? This, this Semiramis, she was the Queen of Heaven. Worshipped by the Catholics today and lives on in Christianity through the false doctrine of the Trinity. See, that's where the first Trinity comes from. Father, Son, and Tammuz. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's the first Trinity. It's Nimrod, Semiramis, and the Son, Tammuz. It wasn't that he reincarnated by the rays of the sun. It's just she was, um, she was who she was. She was. I can say unfaithful. She probably was unfaithful, but however, she conceived and she conceived this son Tammuz. Okay, but it wasn't through the rays of the sun. She was just being unfaithful. Unfaithful, but ahí viene lo, la, la creencia de, de tres, Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo, que viene siendo Nimrod, Semiramis y Tammuz. Esta mujer, Semiramis, que viene siendo la rey, reina de los cielos, the Queen of Heaven. And that's where 
that's where that comes from. But Fat Tuesday, <coughs> Fat Tuesday was yesterday. Ayer era el día que le llaman el gordo martes, martes gorduro. Más bien le llaman Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. Le llaman Mardi Gras, que, viene, que es francés. <coughs> Mardi Gras <coughs> is French for Fat Tuesday. Eso quiere decir Mardi Gras. Quiere decir Gordo Mer Martes. Gordo Martes porque es cuando la gente sabe que van, van a ayunar los 40 días y, y, y se inflan, se, se engorduran con, con lo que sea, se engorduran con tomando se engorduran tomando, comiendo ya no, va, ya no van a tomar según ellos ya no van a tomar que van a, van a dejar de tomar por los 40 días la cuaresma le dicen they're gonna fast for those 40 days so they, it's time to party up right es tiempo de de emborracharse como, como como serpa quién sabe qué ni ellos saben qué dicen I must have had a good time because I don't remember huh? eso dicen que tuvieron una buena noche buen día tirando fiesta que ni se recuerdan que ni se recuerdan ni ellos mismos pero por eso se llama eso Mardi Gras porque no crean que que era tan sencillo ese día no era it wasn't just a, this, this thing that I read it was very mild it's very mild that Mardi Gras when they get to party it's, it's they have a wild time okay? it, it ain't no birthday party, you know, none of this, you know, mm -hmm. apple pie and grandma's whatever. <laughs> they have, they have, they, they live it up mm -hmm. at Mardi Gras, yeah. okay? It's, it's known for that. That Mardi Gras was a, fe used to be a, it dates back to ancient Roman festival honoring the deities from Lupercalia and Saturnalia. And th those times they were, they, they had a wild time in those, those days. A lot of immorality. And, um, but that's what it comes from. <clears throat> that's what Ash Wednesday is, it, the day after. The day of fasting, and, and it was known as a day of, also known as Shrove Tuesday. Mm. And I believe that word Shrove is <coughs> because they uh, confession or whatever. You know, so um, the main thing is you do it as unto the Lord. You do. You're fasting as unto the Lord, not unto men. Right. You do it in secret. Mm -hmm. You do it in secret, not as unto the, unto men. Mm -hmm. You don't need their approval to fast. That's right. You don't need their approval to fast. You don't, you don't need to show anybody how holy you are. Right. You're holier than thou, that they say. <laughs> holier than thou. How, holy art <laughs> holy art then down no you just be you and mm -hmm. and the Lord knows yes. do your service as unto the Lord mm -hmm. we don't disfigure our faces any of that we wash ourselves and that's pretty much it you know with you know with, 
It was a day of fasting, 40 days for Tammuz, where the we women were weeping. They were weeping for him. And uh, people might, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that the Lord did. I mean, not just the Lord. He fasted 40 days. Yeah. There's other examples of 40 days. Moses, when he fasted, went up to the mount. How long was he up there? 40 days. He was up there 40 days. And then came back down and went up another 40 days. But there is no... Um, <clears throat> the Lord doesn't leave any instructions for 40 days. These 40 days that they're going to be fasting, putting things aside, the Lord didn't give any instructions for that. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. It's something that, that has its origins from, from here, ancient Rome. But it's nothing that the Lord said, hey, you need to, to fast. You need to put things aside and then to boot. They do it for 40 days. It's supposed to be 40 days from now until Easter. But you know what they do? They don't count Sundays. Huh? How's that? It's 40 days except Sundays. Cuentan estos días no están en la Biblia. Que, que, que ceniza miércoles, ¿no? Y, y que ayunen por 40 días. No, no está en la Biblia. Aunque Dios sí, Él, él ayunó por 40 días. Hay diferentes cosas que tienen sus 40 días. Como Moisés. Moisés, cuando Dios le dio los diez mandamientos, él ayunó por 40 días, estaba ahí con Dios hablando y, y Dios le dio los diez mandamientos y regresó y, y vio la gente que no estaba bien y quebró los mandamientos y fue otra vez otros 40 días. So, sí, sí hay cosas que pasó por 40 días, pero estos 40 días no hay escritura que nos dice y tienen que ayunar 40 días. So, no tienen, su fundación no está en la Biblia. Viene de algo de, de Romano, ancient Rome, Romano ancianos, los romanos antiguos de de Tamuz que alababan a Tamuz so, um, like it, como dije también que cu cuentan 40 días 40 días okay, a la Pascua cuentan 40 días y cuando los cuentan no cuentan los domingos they count all the days except for Sunday How's that math? Then, you know, it's, I guess when you, when you want to, when you come up with a holiday, when you come up with something, you call the shots, right? You call, you say, make the rules. Mm -hmm. Well, when, with the Lord, he said he was going to be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Uh, Dios dijo que él iba a estar en la, la, en la tierra, en la tumba, tres días y tres noches. Y tres días y tres noches eran. No que no se cuentan los domingos. Y, um, so that's pretty much it. It was the first time I've been meaning to do this lesson and just
just hadn't got around to it. And said, well, I might as well do it today. And uh, mm -hmm. everyone's all into Ash Wednesday and telling their good stories. And well, now, now you know where it came from. Mm -hmm. It came from the 40 days of the women weeping for Tammuz because he got killed in a boar accident. The boar came and got him. And that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? It came from ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. so that, like I said, people, you know you're going to fast. What do you do? Stuff your face the night before, right? <laughs> You stuff your face the night before. Because <laughs> you're going to make it last. You don't know when you're going to get your next meal, right? So you stuff your face and let's go. I'm ready to fast. I got plenty of reserve, right? You got plenty of reserve. That's what they do. That's why they call it Fat Tuesday. They, ha they get their fill on Tuesday. Get their fill on Tuesday and they're ready to go 40 days without it. And uh, sometimes they overdo it. We overdo it. Amen. So come to the altar. Come to the altar.